Okay, boys, you receive your instructions. Protect yourself at all times. Protegese todo el tempo. Shake them up, guys. Let's go. So we're ready to get another look at the 18-year-old Wilkins Mathieu, who, as you see in our tail of the tape, will enjoy a height and reach advantage here tonight. The 3-0 Wilkins Mathieu against the 2-0 Cesar Lopez. Round one. This one's scheduled for four in the super middleweight division. Of note, Morgan, Wilkins Mathieu weighed in at 164 and a half, which perhaps means that as time goes on, and of course he is a growing athlete, but 160 could potentially be in the conversation for Mathieu. Yes, it's, uh, that could be in the conversation, but you have to remember he's also 18 years old. And one, he's 18 years old with the, with the metabolism of an 18-year-old. Of an yes. And what I read into that is that he is fighting at his natural walking around weight. So he's going to have an advantage for a while just because he's going to be facing people that have to drain themselves to make this weight, especially as he moves up uh, the food chain. Uh, but what it also sort of signals, because, again, he's 18 years old, is that four or five years from now, he might be a light heavyweight. But the first thing I noticed about him is just his size and his length, like the size of his frame. Uh, once he gains a little weight, which naturally happens when you hit 22, or between 18 and 22, uh, he might grow into a new weight class. We're also noticing here early on, Wilkins knowing exactly what to do against a southpaw here. He's landed a trio of right hands that have snapped the head back of Cesar Lopez already. And you can see the hand speed as he lands a bolo punch. Yes, we don't see many of those landed. You see many of them threatened for the purposes of taunting your opponent, but yes. seldom do they actually connect like that right hand right down the pipe from Mathieu. Yeah, the, the speed disparity is glaring. And again, this is one of the reasons you would have thought a fighter like Wilkins Mathieu, with a beautiful counter uppercut there to the body, might have preferred staying amateur only because he's so fast and so accurate and, and amateur judging uh, rewards that type of style. But he's also well, well, well suited uh, to professional boxing, as you're seeing right now. Wilkins Mathieu also very much a, a boxing history buff as well. Watches uh, about as much boxing as we watch, Morgan. This man watches absolutely everything. So I think there was always kind of a, a clarity of purpose for Wilkins Mathieu. He had his first fight at the age of 10. By the age of 15, had moved to Montreal by himself and had decided this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. So I think maybe he could have stayed amateur, but I think he was just ready to start his career. And fighters that watch a lot of boxing and have uh, this massive catalog of moves and scenarios in their head, it comes through in the fighting. Like, look how focused and composed uh, Matthew is here, like not rattled at all by seeing the southpaw, as you said, knows exactly what to do, uh, straight right to the body, gets his lead foot outside of uh, Lopez's lead foot. And again, a lot of that comes from just having seen so much of the sport for so many years. Final moments of a dominant opening round here from Wilkins Mathieu, and he ripped that left hook. Tucked it behind the elbow of a Cesar Lopez. What a way to close out the opening round. You heard Mike Moffa calling for that left uppercut, the same punch you saw towards the end of that round. And again, Matthew just you, using that length to keep Lopez off guard, off balance, off timing, finishing one combination with the up jab. There's that left hook that Moffa was calling for. Really impressive, smoothly executed first round for Wilkins Matthew. Well, round two begins, and it was the left hook to the body that was the, the final shot that we saw from Mathieu at the end of round one, but it's a right hand that snaps the head back of Cesar Lopez to begin round two. And what impresses me about Mathieu so far, and in, in the little bit we've seen of him only because his fights tend to end so quickly, is that he can lead and he can counter. You know, he's not one of these fighters that 
labels himself a counterpuncher and needs somebody else to lead. And he's not a person that struggles if the other person wants to lead. He can do either one. A couple of fights ago, Mathieu faced Jose Gonzalez here at the Montreal Casino, and there were some who felt that Mathieu kind of carried Gonzalez a, a little bit for the purposes of getting rounds in. And I think he's learned that there's no sense in playing with his food, so to speak. <laughs> he is not carrying Cesar Lopez uh, toward anything other than a knockout right now, considering what he's throwing. No, and we've, we've got a brief pause in the action uh, because of a low blow, but low blows happen incidentally when you are as committed of a body puncher as Wilkins match is. Another lead right, right between the gloves. And that's a shot that Mike Moffat was calling for in the corner as Mathieu drops Cesar Lopez with what looked like a fairly innocuous left hook, but he's landed so many of them, Morgan, that the punishment probably is starting to accumulate. Also, it looked innocuous from here, but we're not on the receiving end of that. What I was impressed by was the amount of power Mathieu was able to generate uh, with not a lot of a windup. That came straight from the shoulder. Lead right hands from Mathieu. Wilkins Mathieu putting on a show here as he rips a right hand downstairs. Now, stylistically, they're very different fighters, but the, the similarity I see between Mathieu and David Benavides is that they're both really tall, super middleweights who, who are power punchers, not because they have big muscles like Hataya, but because of the leverage they're able to get on their shots. Long-limbed fighters who just get a lot of leverage on left hooks and on straight right hands. And uh, our friend Lopez is on the receiving end of that. He can tell us, too, how much power. Well, tell us firsthand how much power Wilkins Mathieu can generate. Mathieu obviously blessed with hand speed, but also you know, we go back to his boxing fanaticism. There's, there's a creativity to his offense as well. There's a free-flowing aspect to it. Yes. When he had Lopez seriously hurt, and he lets his hands right, right go there. like that. A beautiful combination, and an uppercut drops Lopez to the canvas. Five, six, seven, eight. A long eight count. Lopez taking every second to recover there. And he will make it out of the round. And Corey, what uh, I really enjoy about watching a fighter like Wilkins match at this stage in his career is that you can almost watch him improve round by round. Let's take a look at some of Wilkins Mathieu's handiwork here from the previous round. Beautiful counter right. And there's that shot that the kill that uh, Mike Moff has been calling for, that left hook to the body. Looked like it was on the belt line. Referee called it a low blow. And right there, that beautiful, quick lead left hook. Really effective punch for an orthodox fighter against a southpaw because it keeps him in front of you, keeps that guy from sneaking out the back door. And again, just so much leverage on those left hooks to the body in there. Right there, the uppercut to the jaw, followed by the left hook, which didn't land only because Lopez was on his way straight down. So as much, Corey, as you talk about uh, Mathieu with this free-flowing, improvisational style, he's also a guy that has mastered the fundamentals, that left hook, that uppercut followed by the left hook, and here we go. Well, the referee will wave this one off immediately. The first shot that Mathieu threw, it landed. The glove of Cesar Lopez touched the canvas, and the referee has rightfully seen enough. A dominant performance from the teenager, Wilkins Mathieu, who just wiped out Cesar Lopez. And again, Corey, like, we've seen him now, we've seen five rounds of, of Wilkins Mathieu together, and every round there seems to be an improvement. Like, as long as he's been boxing, and as much as he already knows about boxing, he's clearly still learning, and he's clearly still implementing what he's learned, like, on the fly, almost minute by minute, is really impressive to watch. A five-time Quebec Golden Gloves champion. He fought at the IBA Youth World Championships very briefly before turning pro. But he always had his eyes set on a professional career. 
want to do so as quickly as possible, and you can certainly see why. That's you, an impressive looking operator very early in his career. Yeah, and certainly, it, it'll be a couple of years, Morgan, obviously, of these types of developmental fights, but you can see how, you know, perhaps that progression could be sped up a little bit. You don't want to take it too fast with a teenager, but this is a talented kid. Well, as we were discussing with Mark Ramsey yesterday uh, regarding Yono Robio, who was, Yono Robio, who we'll see in our next fight, uh, you know, you have a teenager who's really good, and one of the things you have to determine is, if, is this a person who's just peaking at 18, and we've all seen that athlete before, or is this a person who's has a high floor at 18 and can be something really special at 22, 23, 24, 25. And Matthew looks like he's in that second category. Uh, certainly, I, the Tiger, hoping it is the latter. Wilkins Mathieu with another knockout victory, the third of his career. Let's make it official. Let's Mesdames et messieurs, chronomètre officiel, 14 secondes du troisième round. L'arbitre junior Padulo arrête le combat, déclarant le gagnant par TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, official time, 14 seconds of round number three. Referee junior Padulo stops the fight, declaring the winner by TKO, Wilkins! So Wilkins Mathieu now 4-0 as a professional and to continue with that topic of just how quickly he could develop, again we talked about the maturity of Mathieu, that, that clarity of purpose, the clarity that he has in terms of his path. He said that in four years, 